Okay, I hope we have a quorum. We are good to start. So today we are going to talk about <clears throat> software and hardware requirements. Let's take an example. You got a requirement to implement sale point. Maybe your project, your client, they are using some other IAM solution, not sale point. Some other sale uh, IAM tools they are using. Now they want to migrate, or maybe they are planning for a fresh uh, implementation. It could be anything. So as an architect, not as a support engineer, not as a developer, most of the time, support uh, architect is going to design the architectural document. Okay, it depends. So in if you are an architect and if you get these kind of requirement, how to tackle that uh, situation? So you should know what are the components are required. It, you have to decide which software we are going to install, as well as how you are going to decide the hardware requirement. Because we have to decide, right, how many number of servers are required and out of, I mean, X server, how many UI server, how many task server required, whether load balancer are required or not. In that scenario, how to configure all server into one. And so it, everything, it depends on the number of employees, number of applications, everything. So that's what we are going to learn today briefly. Okay, so before we get into this, I would like to know, do we have any architect, do we have anyone who is architect already for any other product, not only for sale point? Do we have anyone who is architect? Okay, no worries. Let's talk about software and hardware requirements. Okay, can any one of you? Let us know. So what are the software components are required? It's a fresh installation. So what are the softwares are required? Server and database. Okay, you need a server. Database. Database, okay. And? And uh, cell point app we need to install on a server. Is okay. that right? Correct. So you need a cell point application, okay. Okay. Mm. As per my knowledge, that is all we need. Okay. So can anyone of you elaborate what is server? Or why do we require database? To, to retrieve the data or uh, database to application or the you know something you know if you want to retrieve some information i mean i in, i mean in terms of table or you know correct or anything always else. remember we require our own database sale point own database we may have up every, each and every application will have their source data right and all the source data will be stored in somewhere it could be database it could be cloud anywhere they have stored all their data as a similar way sale point is one of the application you should treat sale point as an application and sale point application should own a database okay why because we it's our primary job it's primary task to maintain manage all the user data application data etc etc so we should have our own database and we can manage efficiently so that's the ultimate purpose so definitely we are going to implement one database server where we will create one sale point database okay so here we have mentioned application uh, server but I would like to elaborate. So it's going to be application server. So anyone, can you tell us why do we require application server? So database server, it's fine. So we are going to store the data of an uh, identities, employees, applications, and a lot of identity object. But why do we require application server? So we need application to deploy any of the application, uh, the server to deploy any of the application. So SailPoint is again an application. So we need the 
application server to deploy the sailpoint application exactly so our ultimate purpose we need to install sailpoint sailpoint is our application the moment you are planning to install our application definitely we need an application server because that's okay. the place where we are going to deploy our application so i'll demonstrate tomorrow we'll come to know once we install the application server we will deploy our sailpoint application okay so i have a question again so is all three components are required or do we need to add any extra components mm. what about java Java, Java environment variables, Java, Java. Exactly. So we require Java. Okay. So these four items are enough. So when it comes to Java, you can go ahead for Oracle Java or Oracle JDK. That's fine. But application server, can you name out few application server? Tomcat so Apache. Tomcat is the Tomcat most... Apache. Exactly. So Apache Tomcat is one of the application which is used widely across all the projects platform, I would say. It's a most common used application. So apart from Apache Tomcat, if you want to um, suggest to the Inform client. Inform 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 Informatics or... Uh, Informatica? No, not Informatica. Mm. So... Uh, so so widely used uh, app server is Ap Apache Tomcat, no web logic. Yeah, when it comes to Salesforce, it's a widely used application. Uh, application oh, so, so is it is it possible uh, the enterprise use web logic or web Westphere? Yeah, definitely we can plan web logic yeah. and web Sphere too. Okay, JBoss. JBoss. Yeah. So we can plan for JBoss also. Okay. So at least today you have learned. So we have four different type of application server. We can deploy our application into this. Okay. So when it comes to database server, if you have a lot of options, you can plan for Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, no. You can uh, uh, plan to Oracle. Oracle, even uh, Postgres, uh, Post MySQL. My sequel comes with the, the... Mm -hmm. okay. So Microsoft, Oracle, and and even uh, My SQL also, right? Direct. Yeah. Yeah. My SQL. My SQL. Post. Uh, what is that? Post Gray. Post Gray SQL. Something you'll call. Yeah. We have a lot Postgres. of option over here. And also, so in case if you wanted to use like uh, AWS, uh, those things also easy. I yeah. mean, like um, we can. Okay. We can use that. Okay. Yeah. Azure, Azure it's same automatically same, same like uh, MySQL, right? M MySQL. Yeah. Azure, AWS, we can use. Okay, but in when it comes to real-time project, most of the clients prefer to install Microsoft SQL Server. Because this is what I've seen. Okay, maybe if they are planning to migrate or if they are planning for advanced tool, they can go ahead for AWS or Azure. Okay. But whatever environment currently I'm working, it's a already five to six years older projects. So they are implementing this Microsoft. They have already implemented Microsoft SQL and all. Okay. Do we have database but, for Azure and AWS? Yeah. Oh, what is the database for AWS? Just a minute, guys. Let me. I think AWS. Uh... Oh, maybe there are some uh, what their own databases uh, AWS with that that maybe support I think so. AWS. Guys, I'm audible. Yes. Okay. Really sorry, guys. If I'm again, I mean, if there is any audio issue, just let me know. I'll repeat it again. Okay. Okay. So someone has some question, right? They were talking about database server something. I mean, is that can you repeat? 
Uh, I was asking, is there, is there any database which comes with AWS and uh, Azure? So I, I'm not sure. Okay, all right, you can proceed. Yeah, okay. So when it comes to sailbound application, from where we are going to get it, who is responsible to provide this application? Any idea? Sailbound company itself. Okay. Are we need to take to... the license. Yes, exactly. So if you are planning to implement, definitely we need to reach sale point sales team and technical team. Okay. They have a infrastructure team. So we can reach out to them. They will help you. And they will provide the war file. Always you should remember it's a war file. War file is nothing. It's a combination of XML objects and Java class. Okay. So we will get this soft, uh, war file. We used to call it as sale point software binaries. So we can get this binary, sale point software binaries from the sale point team, product team. So they will provide the war file. So these four items is enough to implement sale point from software standpoint, okay? We can pick easily, but when it comes to hardware, it's very difficult. Right? Because let's say you are going to install sale point on your local machine, on your personal system, or either you are going to implement on real-time project, same Java you are going to install, same application server, same database server, same sale point software binary. There is no changes on that. Maybe the version may differ, but the same all components you are going to implement. But when it comes to hardware, how you are going to decide whether the 4 GB RAM is enough or we require 32 GB RAM, how many servers are required. So how we are going to decide? We should have some baseline right to decide these items. How we are going to decide? Maybe let's say you are going to implement sale point for State Bank of India or Royal Bank of Canada. It's a banking client, banking environment. When it comes to banking environment, the user database, the user will be, be very big, right? For each and every user, we have to manage. So in that scenario, how you are going to decide the hardware component? And once again, you are not the only one who is going to decide. Okay. There will be a couple of people team, but how you are going to decide? Based on what? Take a minute, try to think. We'll talk about it. Have you thought about it, guys, before? Okay. So these hardware requirements will be decided based on, from my personal experience, I would say, the number of identity object. Okay. So identity is fine, but what is identity object? Guys, I'm audible. Yeah, you're audible. Each of each identity is considered as an object in sale point. Correct. But what is identity object? Identity is one of the object. I agree on that. But what is identity object? The object which holds the identity? No. So whatever object in say, I mean, whatever item is available in sale, point, we are going to consider those items as an object. For example, uh, application, we are going to onboard, right? So application is one of the yeah. object. We are going to implement a couple of policies, let's say. So policy is another object, object type. I would say um, we are planning for user access review certification. So certification is one of the object. Okay. So the similar way we have a lot of different type of objects in sale. Okay. End user is going to submit access request to gain some XYZ application access. So you can consider that ticket as an object. For sale point, each and every item, whatever you are going to submit for approval item, application, certification, everything sale point is going to consider as an object. And identity object means whatever objects associate with identity, we should consider those objects as an identity object. Are we clear? Okay. Yeah. Make a note here. 
we should know what is identity and identity object. Both are not same. Because if you understand, if you, these items, I mean, this really will be very helpful. So identity object means <clears throat> whatever item are associated with identities. And you guys know what is identity. Identity is nothing, it's a digital identity, so which will be created from uh, HR application, the source application of an aggregation. So you mean to say identity, the user is again an identity and uh, application is also an identity in sale point? Uh, application is identity object, you can say. Okay. Okay, so I'll try to explain from sale point standpoint. I'll log into sale point. I'll explain this one. Admin, admin. Now we'll choose one identity. Okay, Aaron Nichols is one identity, is an employee. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this employee means this is one identity object. Okay. It's an identity, but you, we can consider this is one of the identity object. So this identity has access to a couple of applications, which means these applications are associated with this identity, right? So we yeah. should consider yeah. these application as one of the identity object. Okay. So company has, uh, company has implemented a couple of policies and some policies are violated by this identity. So whatever policies and policy violations are associated with this identity, we should consider those items as a identity object, okay? We are going to implement risk management. We are going to track everything because whatever changes is gonna to happen to this identity, maybe he got new access, maybe some access has been revoked via certification process. So each and everything will be tracked, right? So these item you can consider as an identity object. And he has access to sale point application. He may have some privileged access whatever ticket has been submitted so far, whatever event has been triggered. So everything will be managed in the identity, with the help of identity object. Are we clear now? So that's why I said, whatever items are associated with identities, we should consider as identity object. So Aaron Nicole is not an identity object. So the, the applications and the, the access mm -hmm. policies, which is associated to Aaron Nicholas is identity object. Okay. Okay, from your standpoint, Aaron Nichols is one identity, right? Yeah. But from sale point standpoint, sale point will consider all the items as an identity object in a simple way. You got it? For okay, sale so point, Aaron, Aaron Nichols Aaron, is one identity object. Oh, Aaron so Nichols is again an identity object and okay. all, all the applications associated, associated with Aaron Nichols again an identity object. Exactly. So everything is an object, identity object. Correct. So in sale point, we have an object browser. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. here, I, I hope you guys will understand. If you're going to implement any alert, so then alert is one of the identity object. Application is one of the identity object. Bundle, audit event, audit configuration. We have a lot of identity object. As I said already, certification. Okay. Email template form. Identity. Again, I say identity is comes under identity object. Okay. So what is the difference between identity object and object browser? So we can access all the identity object with the help of object browser. We can access it's like a repository, all... kind of repository where we can access all the identity object. Got it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's get back to this hardware requirement. So what I'm what I was trying to say, IAQ installation, sale point identity IQ, because the identity IQ is the product what we are going to implement, not identity now. So that identity IQ installation may come in different shapes or a different size, I would say. Okay. So we won't be able to decide very easily. Okay. So most of the time, 
um, that pivot chart and some data statistics shown that over 95% of the IAQ installation, we can group into five categories, uh, five footprint category, I would say. The statistics have shown. So what is footprint? Because as an architect, when you are going to discuss, you should you should know these terms. Okay. So footprint is nothing. It's it's a kind of hardware deployment topology. Okay. So which supports uh, IAQ installation on a certain uh, of a certain scale. Okay. In if you are going to plan, so footprint is nothing. It's a hardware topology. So we have five different type of topology. One, micro footprint. So medium footprint. Micro, medium. Um, small footprint, large, and fifth one. <clears throat> and the fifth one will be something. So we can pick any one of this footprint category and we can easily implement say it. Okay. So these implementation, at least these, whatever specification we are going to choose based on this footprint, at least it will, um, at least you can expect two to three years of a life cycle of the system, a reasonable growth of a system. Okay. So each and every footprint will have some specific hardware requirement. Okay, this may differ. It depends on the number of identity objects. So once again, I am saying we can pick any one of these category. It depends on the number of identity objects. Let's say your company has less than five thousand identity objects. In that scenario, we can choose this micro footprint. I mean, will there be? Will they mention the deployment document uh, about the you know, this many ob ob objects need to, or like you know which footprint we want to go or? Exactly. Yeah. So in the documents, it will be mentioned that we can pick any one of this footprint category. Okay. So before choosing this footprint category, we have to decide. We have to plan on a certain scale. Okay, these many objects we are going to maintain. These many application we are going to onboard. These many policies we are going to implement. Not exactly, but approximately we have to decide. So based on that, we can choose the footprint and we each and every footprint will have specific hardware requirement. Are we clear? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So less than 5,000, sorry, less than 5,000 identity objects means, let's say we have some 200 to 300 employees. We have some block, like 10 to 15 applications. We have implemented 50 policies. And we are planning to review the user access on a quarterly basis. So we may execute five to 10 certifications. So those 200, 300 users may submit access request. Okay, let's consider two to access request they are going to submit. So when it comes to 200 means 400 access requests will get submit, 100 approval item will get generate. So you have to plan on a large scale. It depends on your project and project. If it is less thousand five, uh, sorry, if it is less than five thousand identity object, then four GB RAM is enough as per the document. So you require forty GB space. <clears throat> yeah, I mean you require only one host or one server is enough. Okay, so now we have one server, 4 GB RAM is enough, 40 GB space is enough, that's fine. But when it comes to server, server should have some operating system, right? What about the operating system? It could be 
could be Windows or it could be Linux. Okay. So this server has Windows operating system. Let's take an example. So this machine has 4 GB RAM, 40 GB space. So we can implement sale point very easily. So now the real picture is we are going to install Java on this server. We are going to install this application server called Apache Tomcat in this server. So this Microsoft SQL server, again in the same server, and we are going to deploy our application also, which means all four together, we are going to install everything on the same single server. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So RAM space, it's enough. What about the processor? The dual core processor, at least you can expect. As per the document, guys, because nowadays we are having more than this. When if you are planning to purchase any system or server, whatever it may be, we will get more than this. So when it comes to small footprint, if you're planning to maintain 5,000 to 10,000 object, So in this scenario, you may require 8 GB RAM. So you require 200 GB space, something like that. So again, dual core processor. So if you require the updated document, you can get in touch with the technical team, sale point technical team. They will provide this hardware topology based on that you can decide okay so here you may increase the number of servers like like two to three okay so now when you have two to three server let's take an example two server you have so how you are going to decide uh, how you are going to implement this all four items, all four components. If it is one, we can implement everything on the same, right? We can install everything on the same server. Now you, are, you have two or three server, then how you are going to choose? I would suggest we can deploy all the four and two servers so that we can have higher availability. Okay. That's right. So always remember guys when you have when you are going to increase the number of server you should uh, assign one individual server for db db activity okay so out of three server what can we do we can exclude one server and we can assign that particular server only for db server okay we, so that we can manage our database efficiently so second when we have uh, remaining two server right so we can implement Java application server and save point software binaries into that. Are, are these uh, uh, small footprints still companies uses or what? So most of like the micro, small enterprises micro, they may micro. use. So this micro footprint, which will be useful for us, like it's a non-production environment, right? Mm -hmm. So ours is non-production environment. So we can choose this footprint, micro footprint. So you require 4 GB RAM, 40 GB space. So will our laptop will have this specific requirement, I mean hardware requirement. So we can choose this micro footprint. But when it comes to like small enterprise where only 100 employees are working and we have to manage their data, in that scenario, we can pick this small footprint. But when it comes to larger corporate, I mean, when it comes to corporate, larger environment, definitely they have to choose either larger footprint, large footprint, or fifth category. Okay. Okay, when it comes to medium footprint, so 10,000 to 50,000 identity object. So again, you may have eight or 16 GB RAM. 
when it comes to real time project at least you will have 16 gb ram guys so 500 gb space okay when i when we are going to talk about space so we are going to install these four component three component right except database server so in that server 2 gb space is enough but when it comes to database server you always plan for larger space like 1 terabyte 2 terabyte something like that okay so again 200 gb for normal server and 1 terabyte space for or maybe you can i would say 500 gb db server so you require dual core or four core processor and here we, we can increase three to five servers something like that Okay, the moment you are going to increase the number of server, some server will work as a load balancer, some server will work as a UI server, okay, user interface server, some server will work as a task server, batch server. I hope you guys have an idea about this. What is UI task server and all? If no, we can talk about that. Can we? What is that? What is UI server, task server, batch server? load balancer no load balancer i know but about you as server. what is a task server and ui server okay so on a high level we'll talk about that i'll make a note okay let me complete this after the build up ui server task server and a load balancer yeah batch Bats. server and load balancer because here we are going to mention like three to five server two to three server seven to eight server or maybe more than 20 server it depends on the number of identity objects that what we are going to manage that's fine but out of those server we have to decide we have to segregate okay out of 20 four server or five server will work as a will act as a task server uh, remaining five server will act as a UA server. Couple of server will work as a U, uh, load balancer server. So we have to dedicate, we have to sign. So let's, we'll talk about that. So if you are planning to maintain 10,000 to 50,000 identity objects, then we can choose this medium footprint. That's fine. So if it is between 50,000, which means 50K to 500K, 500k then we can choose this large footprint <clears throat> so here the number of server is going to increase again 16 not 32 gb to have a user i mean to have a user experience if you want to make a user experience much better definitely we should increase the hardware requirement like here, you require one terabyte for all server. Instead of normal, we can mention UI or task. Guys, and once again, the number may change slightly, okay? Better we can ask self on technical team get the latest hardware topology document okay if you are an architect so here one terabyte or i mean you should have two terabyte space for database server so here definitely you require four core processor Here you can have three to seven or five to seven or else more than seven server. It depends. 
on the document, latest document, you can check. I would mention more than seven. Okay. What is the fifth category? If you are planning to maintain, manage more than 500 key identity objects, more than five lakh. So in this scenario, it will be difficult to decide the hardware requirement on our own. So instead of doing that, what can we do? We can reach the sale point technical team to get the help from their end. So they will get our requirement, how many identity objects, what we, I mean, what we are going to implement, manage, and what kind of procedural changes, what kind of customization we are looking for. So they will get everything. They will prepare the architectural document, design document, and they will help us in the implementation. And they will charge some XYZ amount. Okay. So the fifth option is call option. All sale point. So they will take care on their own everything. Okay. So this will be the fifth category. So the most of the time it will be used in fourth category and fifth footprint category. Okay. Are we clear? Yes, Rakesh. Okay. Ibrahim. One more thing I would like to let you. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. But uh, I mean, are we going to see like it is the uh, micro footprint, like you know, kind of we're going to do like yes, exactly. Uh, so we are going to because ours is non-production environment, right? Yeah. And we are going to maintain less than 5,000 identity objects. So we can choose uh, the micro footprint. I mean, so one server is enough. Okay. Okay. So I mean, one... what exactly, identity objects exactly means what exactly? What is it, the one which you showed me? Like, you know, mm -hmm. users or uh, users identity that is called uh, identity objects or. Okay. So Suresh, let's take an example. You are an employee of XYZ company, right? You are you have joined the company, joined the project. Your okay. identity got created, right? Yes. So your identity is one of the identity object. Okay, Sale like point will consider your identity object as one of the identity object. You may okay. require some application in order to perform day-to-day -day activities, like Active Directory application, service now application, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So those mm -hmm. access you are going, I mean, Sale Point will grant to your identity. So okay. sale point will consider those application accounts as another type of identity object. Oh, okay. okay. In future, but... you may violate some policies. Some policy mm -hmm. violation will be triggered. Again, some item will be generated, right? So those policy violation item, it's an identity object. Oh, okay. From Everything sale point is standpoint, okay. exactly. Okay. So from sale point standpoint, each and every item, it will consider as an identity object. So oh, that's what we the, the numbers is uh, more. That is uh, that's the reason we are taking like too many numbers, like five hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, ten thousand. Exactly. Because okay. we are not sure, right? Each and every company will have five hundred k employees. We are not sure. If it is a banking environment, larger scale, that's fine. But when it comes to smaller enterprises, small enterprises, we have to plan everything, like employees, applications, servers, hardware, everything. We have to decide. I mean, we have to define. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I would like to add one more point here. Always remember, sale point no longer recommends 32-bit operating system or maybe 32-bit softwares like Java. It won't recommend. Always sale point will recommend 64-bit hardware and softwares. Is recommended for all type of installation. Okay regardless of whatever type of footprint it may be, always sale point will recommend 64 bit hardware system, hardware and software. Um, so you, you said banking uh, client. So for example, uh, uh, State Bank of India, so yeah. it's having some uh, uh, like uh, two, two, I mean, five crore uh, customer they have. Yeah. So all the five crore customers' data will be there in sale point, or they will have their like they they have their own database and they will keep their uh, employed. I mean the customer detail in that's a good uh, question, database, right? Okay, that's a good question. So State Bank of India is a company, right? 
Mm-hmm. Imagine it's a company. They have five crore users. So it's state, uh, state bank of India's primary uh, task to maintain everything, right? They should manage, they should protect the data, user data from cyber attacks, correct? Yeah. And whenever the transaction is going to happen, they, ha- they ha- are going to track everything. They are going to store all these items, right? Everything. Yeah. So definitely they require some tool, some application in the backend. Yeah. So we, they can show sale point. But uh, they have their own application and the application. So the transaction detail, everything will be there in the application, right? Okay. They, That's a good point. Right. Sale point for that. So they have, they need a centralized system, right? Centralized dashboard, centralized system. They like uni, uni, uh, unified portal. They can track everything. They have their own application. So that application will be used by all the users. What can we do now? We can onboard that particular Yono SBA application or something. We can integrate that application with SailPoint. We can okay. integrate their own database with SailPoint so that we can manage everything from single place, from one place. Are, what they, doing, are they doing like that? I mean, you say... Uh, no, I'm not sure whether State Bank is doing or not. But when it comes uh-huh. to like Capital Loan Bank, uh-huh. uh, Royal Bank of Canada, yeah. ANZ Bank, they are using SailPoint. Okay, like, like they Walmart. SailPoint is the centralized uh, repository, like uh, the internal uh, internal uh, bank employee use SailPoint to uh, uh, monitor or uh, uh, track the transaction, not the customer, right? Yes. Okay. Well, they, 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 will, they will only integrate, right? Integrate SailPoint to the centralized uh, server from there. They can access everything, it seems, for yes. their user information, user data. Correct. So any other question, guys? I think we need to talk about all the terminologies as well. I think that's what we discussed yesterday. We have to talk about it. Or is it not required? Anyone go for uh, architect? Yeah, these are all required, I guess. Hmm? Am I gonna... no, if anyone, anyone wanted to go for an architect, we need these details, I guess. Yeah, definitely. So that's why I cover initially. If you are going to work as an architect, definitely you should aware about this footprint topology, what kind of different type of footprint work we have, how to decide this hardware requirement. As I said already, as a developer or as a support engineer, we are not going to get into this activity. And once again, I'm saying, because this is a tricky one, in real-time project, they will ask, who will do the installation? So infrastructure team are the one who is going to do the installation, not sale point developer, not support engineer, or not architect. Architect may monitor this installation, but he's not going to involve in this activity. Infrastructure team will take care. And well, um, one time I, I remember when I was in a project, mm. they were asking the architect also do an low environment test. No, they have installed everything. It's like a post install validation, right? It's kind right. of post install validation. Okay, we uh, infrastructure team will say we have done the installation, it's completed successfully. You need to validate from your end. So those kind of post install activity will be done by support engineer as well, not only architect. Maybe small small uh, companies they might you know uh, mm-hmm. and ask them to do you know kind of validations okay. or testing. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, again, it depends on the project, guys. Some projects, yeah. architect will decide. Some project support engineer is going to validate the post-install validation. It depends on the project. Also. Okay. And sale point is one of the advanced application which is used by financial institution, banking institution, and yeah, financial most of the time. So that's all about software and hardware requirements. I mean, healthcare, healthcare also they use healthcare for the user identity access management sale point. Healthcare, too, yeah. yeah. Healthcare and yeah, healthcare also they are using. I remember one of the client name. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't take. And generally, I would say Capital One Bank, Royal Bank of Canada, Unify, Super Value. If you have, belongs to US, Canada, you may have this name. Super value, unify, and one of the largest 
रिटायरमेंट फंड होल्डर स्टेट स्टेट डू यू डू यू हैव यू हॉर्ड दिस नेम स्टेट स्टेट नो 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 इट्स अ फाइनेंशियल कंपनी एग्जैक्टली सो स्टेट स्टेट आल्सो यूजिंग सेल पॉइंट ऑन अ लार्जर स्केल ओके and the state bank of india example i mean it's an example guys we are not sure whether they are using or not how they have integrated and all we are not sure in the back end so for an example i have i have taken that okay so we have 10 more minutes if you have anything to discuss we can discuss if you have anything to clarify yeah rakesh you are talking about the terminologies to explain yeah. yes so, so let's talk about that yeah can we proceed Oh, sorry. Before that, we should talk about this UA server, TAS server, and all. Yeah. So, can anyone of you tell us what is UA server? User interface. No, oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. User interface, correct? <laughs> no, guys. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I'm very off. Yeah. <laughs> that's user interface server only. No. <laughs> UA server. So what will be the purpose of implementing this us that maybe the users uh, you know i mean users does some activity on the you know from the kind of front end that's uh, let's say this is application you know they're using this called user interface right kind of gui correct, correct. so it's a gui right it's a front end you can consider this screen as a front end screen or you may consider as a gui graphic user interface the moment a end user is going to access this identity tab application tab or any other tab they are going to perform some activity so some load will be created correct if some 10 users are going to access this portal then that's fine if 1000 users are going to use the same identity tab at the same time or whatever ui tab they are going to click some load will be created and the load will be taken care by ui sir ui load will be taken care by ui server similar way whatever task we are going to run some task means not only this task okay we may uh, run lot of jobs i would say lot of jobs in the back end so those back end activities because as an end user you may submit access request you may grant you may get the provisioning i mean you may get the application access you may involve in this policy violation or policy activity you may involve in this certification activity so some or other thing in the back end it will run so those background activity will create some load so the background activity load will be taken care by task server um yeah go ahead so the the other as the page in the debug page you are you are typing the object browser right correct and you are typing something and it is it is going to the database bringing uh, bring up the uh, result is correct. that the ui server or uh, uh, like uh, typing like for example it's a ui server activity right? so it's going to the database and getting the data so is that uh, it it won't go to the back end like usually like a java application whatever ui we have the ui mm. will be uh that i i i never heard any different servers uh, everything will be in one server like mm. database one server and application one server everything all the application related done in one server so mm. here like in the object browser you are typing something it is going mm. to database and get uh, get the result is that consider uh, typing here is the ui and then going back to the database is uh, at the back end server how would uh, difference okay so as you said we have four to five server right let's take an yeah. example we have implemented all server we are going to implement the application server everything but the moment you are going to you have to declare out of four or five server two server will act as a ui server two server will act as a task server something like that we have to design define the moment we are going to define the particular self server will be responsible for ui activity 
and as you are asking the moment you are talking about the object browser right mm. so this object browser is the replica of the sale point own database not any target application database okay okay so the load will be the activity will be taken care by ua server okay so, so we have a document like property files where we can mention so whatever operation you are you are triggering from ui is uh, go, it will go into ui server is it exactly okay so the same way whatever task we are going to perform in the back end like provisioning certifications a lot of activities will be performed in the back end right so those back end activity will be taken care by task server and when it comes to batch server batch and task server both are same in some projects they may call it as task server in some project they will call it as a batch server but both significantly the same Sorry guys, load balancer. What is load balancer? Any idea? Is to um manage the load of the each of the servers. So if one server is gets too jammed up, it balances the the server. I don't know if I, I think it's like in the traffic, traffic controlling the traffic. Oh, sorry guys. If you don't mind, can you come again? I missed that. Yeah, controlling the traffic. Uh, if the volume is high like that, it will be. Okay, controlling the traffic on which server? Is it UA server or TAS server? Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, guys, let's take an example. Uh, this is UA server, right? So UA link will be provided to the end user. Imagine a scenario if 1000 users are going to access this link at the same time, they may face some and the user experience won't be smooth. They may face some latency issue, correct? Since 1000 users are going to access the same link, the UI load will be more. Isn't it? This UI server load will be more. So what can we do? Instead of providing UI server URL, we can provide load balancer URL to all of the users. So if 1000 users are going to access this load balancer URL at the same time, the so load balancer is responsible to split the load. Uh, in our environment, let's say we have two in, uh, UI servers. So the load will be split into two UA servers. The first 500 user load will be taken care by one UA server. Another remaining 500 user load will be taken care by another UA server. So the load balancer is responsible to split the load. As he said, so it will try, I mean, basically it will split the load. Does that make sense? So that's why in real time project, definitely we require load balancer. And also one server fails you usually now. Uh, one is a primary, one is a secondary. And so that, you know, it won't uh, they share the, what do you call yeah, we can. The fail over yeah, situation in a kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not, we have to log into the particular server and we have to design whether the server is going to act as a task server or UA server. We have to click on the toggle button. That's it. Yeah. It's very simple. I'll show you. Click it out. So guys, are we clear so far? Yeah. Okay. So that's a wrap for the software and hardware requirements, guys. Tomorrow we'll talk about uh, the soft, I mean, the, all the IAQ terminologies, and we'll start the fresh installation on any one of your system. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. We can I mean, when you when when installation, installation, we're gonna install everything Tomcat or yeah, we have to install it. Okay. How much time it will take? Uh, uh, like practice? 60 to 90 minutes. I'll explain everything from this scratch. So it okay. requires 60 to 90 minutes. Okay. So, so I mean, virtual machine or? Hmm? Come again? We need VMware. Virtual machine? Uh, if it is a Mac system, definitely it requires. 
or if it is a mm. windows system windows machine it's not okay but ram should be like how much ram we required 8 gb okay yeah. you said if it is a mac then i need a uh, virtual machine yeah yeah my dear since as i said already i'm not familiar with mac and i don't know how to do the implementation on mac system that's mm. why okay maybe if i get any help or else we can give it i mean we can give a try right as we discussed okay. already yeah yeah okay we we'll okay get to try and then if you're using doesn't... i7 processor so we can give a try once again okay sure yeah we'll thank you process. Hey, I have a question. So, in a typical uh, a large, uh, large scale industry, mm. uh, how like? Anand, if you don't, Anand, if you don't mind, can we continue tomorrow? Definitely, I'll uh, no 